Hi all, I have a rather amazing game to show you today, played between David Navarra and Radislaw Wojciechowicz, Wojciechowicz, 2733, playing black. So David Navarra is 2724. This was being played in the, um, this has been played in the Bill Tournament in Switzerland. So 23rd of July 2015, David Navarra kicked off with E4 and we saw a Sicilian defence and we get into the Nidorf variation here so the Nidorf Bishop e3 most common move e5 very popular sequence here Bishop e6 and the usual moves for whites include f3 or Queen d2 here slightly less usual h3 but still played quite a bit Bishop e7 and now most often players with whites here it's over 100 games in my book they play the move Queen f3 for example uh, if castles like this I think it's probably designed against something like uh, d5 it's designed against that for taking and there'll be problems here for black uh, let's just check this put on the kibitza here if uh, bishop takes I think we can just take and this position should be okay for white slight edge but uh yeah here funny enough g4 was played so the usual move queen f3 in my book or f4 but g4 te only 10 games including this one now because it seems to be a classic case of the flank attack surely it's um it, it's got a problem here the flank attack because black can counter quite strongly in the center that's the classic recipe with d5 here whilst queen f3 the, the more standard move being played kind of tries to discourage that g4 seems to go completely into it uh into d5 runs into it uh so what's the idea well white now played e takes d5 and actually there's an interesting thing about this bishop on this diagonal now. See that e pawn clear. This diagonal is a little bit more useful for the bishop. After knight takes d5, we see the move bishop g2. So white has a potentially nice bishop now, but knight takes e3, queens come off, bishop takes, f takes e3. So white's got this pressure on b7, immediately threatening bishop takes b7. Uh, but there's a snag isn't there there's this check isn't that annoying can black do something with that check we see um, in fact bishop h4 check king f1 and here it seems also useful bishop c4 might might be a useful check but first black blocks b7 from the bishop and now white actually goes for b7 again with knight c5 resting knight takes b7 so it's a pretty sensitive diagonal we see the check king g1 and now protecting b7 in style with casting queenside also implies that the rook might come down to d2 quite usefully on the seventh rank white now though sees a slight downside of this in that b3 that bishop hasn't got too many squares at all in fact it doesn't really want to go to e6 pardon me to e6 to be snapped off or b5 uh, and in fact black counters that with bishop g5 threatening bishop takes e3 and bishop takes c5 white protects that pawn bishop h4 rook b1 and bishop g5 again and now king f2 which is the start of something really quite incredible here I'll keep track of this king movement from now on so the king has gone to f2 now keep track of that because something very very interesting about this game now black played bishop h4 check and yeah the intention is not a quick draw here white actually now played king f3 so the problem for black is this bishop it really doesn't want to go back to e6 you know white could snap that off and have a beautiful e4 square and black's pawns would be a wreck 
we see instead black trying to kind of make the white king by drawing it up the board we see e4 check so is the king in mortal danger here let's see um, if king takes this is pretty bad actually off the check and the king's going to get sliced i think if we look at this the king's getting sliced so that's not a good way uh to play the position here uh it's actually pretty too dangerous so a much wiser choice rather than taking that pawn on e4 um but this this still looks a little bit crazy perhaps a lot of people just take with the knight here and this might be okay off the check check we might get a draw by repetition here the king of three knight e5 but uh no an even crazier move king f4 and i don't know if many of you have seen the, the film the matrix uh, one of the matrix films where uh the the hero of the film goes goes into the computer land and it's it's like um what what a crazy thing to do to go into the computer land at the end uh where all the robots is going to be surely killed it's a bit like this uh the, the king walk here okay so um is, isn't this a bit risky going into black's territory like this with the king and in fact we see now g5 check so the king uh, is going into the opponent's territory now normally you'd think is, isn't white playing a little bit like um someone new to chess king safety uh the king should be put in a safe spot that's why we've invented castling to help king safety uh so anyway so the king is now drawn up the board here again taking on e4 is um pretty bad news so rook h e eight check this this is this is really bad news this this continuation here because there's always this f5 threat thing i mate in two and this you know what does white actually do here he actually has to give up material that's that's not not too good <clears throat> so the king actually goes to f5 what a route already king going to f5 and again you know the knight's usefully guarding e6 well essentially guarding e6 here rather and black actually positionally has actually blocked in his dark square bishop unless that bishop is getting back uh, later via a diagonal like f2 etc it seems a bit stuck actually so what is going on here black now plays rook h e8 threatening rook d6 and rook e5 simply mating the white king now if the white bishop sorry if white takes the bishop rather with b takes then yeah this this is really quite good for for white pardon me it's it's rather good for black after rook d6 threatening rook e5 checkmate uh white would have to do something pretty desperate here uh to survive that so no taking the bishop is a big no no here in light of rook d6 and rook e5 so we see uh, a very very good move in the circumstance rook hd1 king seems in a really precarious spot uh rook e5 check drawing the king further up the board and now rook g8 with the threat immediately of executing the king with rook g6 checkmate Uh, but the thing is the king uh taking on f7 is is protected by that bishop so it's at this moment that the c4 bishop is taken so that's not checkmate now we see instead the king progressing on his journey with king takes f7 fascinating position absolutely black now okay it suffered a material deficit of, of losing that bishop and this bishop's a bit stuck so has he actually got a mating net does he believe he's got a mating net he plays rook e7 check or to king f8 fantastic journey we see 
now rook f6 check perhaps in this position it seems as though black could try and secure a draw with rook eg7 this uh, would seem to be uh, forcing at least like a perpetual check draw uh, for example knight e6 check here there's a check here and there's a ch check here if this rook e8 rook g takes e6 and um, this this seems okay for black this position this is all pretty crazy but this seems as though the king is not getting out in a hurry here and why it's forced to play extremely accurately here threatening bishop d6 and eventually we get this position where it's it's like a draw here um uh yeah it's it's pretty pretty complicated stuff but basically the king is in such a state that uh, it forces like a, a repetition so yeah that was a very very complex way of drawing in fact not just a simple rook discovered a uh, discovered not repetitive check but uh yeah rook e eg7 here it seems from an engine point of view is actually securing a draw black played in fact rook f6 check king goes to g8 and it seems white has a small advantage here <laughs> because there's no force draw now for black it seems from a technical point of view i'm, I'm talking from a few purely theoretical point of view there doesn't seem to be a, a totally forced draw available for black but the king seems to be in a completely ridiculous position we have rook g6 check yeah and if king f8 then then um you know rook f6 we repeat no the king actually um after rook g6 goes into the corner and i had you know i had this idea to do players in tournaments try and play ridiculous games? Do they go out of their way? Are, are, are they asked by the tournament organisers to play ridiculous games or, or do some stunts? Or is it, is it some secret challenges are going on? Uh, we, we have this online, um, you know, not just to win, but if you're streaming, you know, people might ask you to play the bong cloud or something. Have, have the tournament organisers asked for a king walk to H8 or something as part of the game challenge? <laughs> I don't know but it seems the most ridiculous walk ever I don't know and it does remind me of the film The Matrix as I say when when the hero goes into the computer land and, and for the final like, battle um, uh, so um, wow um, and he's not getting mated here necessarily we see rook f6 threatening mate though rook f8 one one move away but white defends now with probably the best move in the position it looks like rook f1 very logical and black plays bishop f2 so again renewing the threat of rook f8 checkmate unbelievable but here white sacrifices the exchange that saves against the mate as well useful so the material uh, is is funny here. This rook f8 checkmate threat. Um, if if king g8, which does save against the checkmate, then after rook takes g2, black might actually be a little bit better here. Might actually be a little bit better. In fact, a stronger move than moving the king here, it seems, was played. And sacrificing the bishop on g2 i know this is this is this game is absolute nuts um so it leaves actually black the exchange up now but for how many pawns three four five six one two three four five for a pawn but uh the king gets a visiting rook on its side finally it's not just all alone up there on h8 in your opponent's position it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous anyway so a friendly face the rook appears next to the king so king c7 
yes this is the sort of game if you ever got the magazine kingpin it was a, a, a sort of magazine with very funny entertaining games and, and very funny stories and commentaries and articles you can get it online kingpin but this is the sort of game i think they love to feature because it's like what is what is this game you know <laughs> so so anyway knight d5 check knight d5 check was played this might not have been this might not be the most accurate move actually it seems tempting to win back the exchange immediately but in fact knight five takes e4 might be my it seems stronger with knight d5 kept in reserve for a bit longer uh for example rook d7 knight d5 and, it, and it's really quite dangerous uh here this 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 position uh for black well black would be forced to uh give up in fact the exchange here and that um doubles white's pawns and this is actually mm, fantastically good this is nearly like this is like plus four plus five for white so that is just just taking on e4 here seems much stronger yeah um so knight d5 check but easy for anyone with an engine of course oh yeah yeah knight takes e4 much better than he made it knight d5 but knight d5 is so tempting i can understand everyone can understand you know get back the exchange the king's managed to survive should be given a med medal for bravery let alone anything else about this game so knight takes e7 and why isn't like loads of material down in fact um rather amusingly the king might be useful in the end game it was steinitz that said the king's like a, a fighting piece i think he'd be smiling about this game if he can look down at us and our games he's saying oh yes i was right all along but even even your top you know super grandmasters have shown when i said you know the king's like in a, a fighting piece i was right wasn't i well let's see here if um uh here in this position after knight takes e7 if king takes e7 there's a choice of which knight to take if king takes e7 uh this wasn't played white's actually better it seems with this move rook g8 this position is actually uh better for white this position here is, is pretty nice and that pawn's immune because of knight d6 this, this position where in fact the white king is is much better than the black king here and could probably even just take here or rook takes g5 that keeps the shield against the black king moving and that would you know that's a, that's a much better end game position for white but anyway so yeah the king actually more wisely took on c5 and it's black's king's turn to be used aggressively in this end game scenario yes the the black king's now getting pretty aggressive coming down here and there's these shattered pawns to collect on on route there's this potential pass pawn if that pawn could be cleared we see check and the black king's now coming down yes both kings are, are really being active now uh, uh so knight takes c6 and some simplification we enter this rook and pawn ending very very strange way of getting to a rook and pawn ending where the king's gone well ahead of potential past pawns miles ahead um rook takes g5 clearing away to make a two to one pawn majority rook g3 to try and get this past pawn going maybe supported by the king uh and yes uh we see h4 here uh black now played h6 maybe maybe uh rook takes e3 m might be proven to be slightly more accurate but uh we'll go with the game continuation and now rook takes e3 so black's trying to get his pass pawn down against these two king g7 rook g3 king takes h6 so the king's returning back to to clear the way for these guys e3 and it seems here that uh, after e3 technically and i mean technically white should be getting a potentially winning advantage by playing a, a super accurate move here in the form it seems of g5 g5 it seems 
is, is good for white because what can happen here um, is a scenario where these two connected past pawns will be winning. For example, like this, where black, although he might be queening, uh, the two past pawns trump the rook here. And I've actually seen this endgame in the Middlesex League a few weeks ago, uh, well, a few, month, uh, a few months ago in the last season where the two pawns are just too strong here. Uh, the, the king is too far away. The black king is actually too far away to help uh, the rook. Uh, so this this is like diabolical. Uh, this, this position here. Um, well, black can't really do anything. He's just, he's just uh, this pawn's going to be queening after winning the rook. So it seems as though g5, it seems this is the most accurate way of playing things. But um, a mistake now move with the king. I believe king g5. This allowed the possibility, if black plays super accurately here, black had the possibility of drawing this game, it seems, by making an aggressive use of his own king and trusting a similar scenario to what you've just seen, but far more accelerated. Um, and black played king d5. So here... The key improvement seems to be easy to say in retrospect, king c3. And now let's look at this scenario now. Takes as an example here, king d2 guiding this pawn down. Here you see slightly different because that king's in, in the way. So we see a slightly different scenario where the black king can actually really help things now here gets in the nick of time here it's, this is actually it seems a draw uh, in the nick of time yeah uh, if king f5 king sorry if king f7 king f5 and if here then rook takes h7 pinning g7 and if here then again king uh, g5 is enough to draw so that would be like a draw but uh, yeah fortunately after King G5, a return kind of mistake was made. And as, as I know from personal experience, of course, um, especially in Blitz, you know, these end games require huge accuracy uh, and, and gigantic accuracy and, and depth, you know, is often the case to try and win them, especially Rook and Pawn endings. So King D5 puts White in the driving seat again. The King's been on a magnificent journey throughout this game, slightly a uh, mistake going to g5 earlier but now after king f4 black now the last chance at a bit of resistance it seems was playing the move e2 that was the last chance here for a little bit more resistance and the point is here although it seems impossible to stop the pawn white does actually have the move c4 nudging the king away from e6 so then white goes into e6. But nevertheless, black in this position uh, it seems might have some hope here. Might have some hope. Um, although it does actually in this particular variation seem as though not not too much hope. Uh, this this is this is good for white as well. But uh, it might have, in some variations, offered great resistance to play e2. Nevertheless, it seems that was, that was the last potential improvement on Black's play. Black held the pawn here with rook h3, and now h5. So very clever that this this c4 check is so critical for stopping this pawn here. So you see that if e2. But there's also uh, another way of getting behind the pawn with, with the check now as well. So e2 doesn't do too much here. Black played c5. If e2, um, in fact, the strongest way is not c4 check here. That's that's actually not particularly good after king d4. The strongest way, if this had been played, is check. And then here, say rook e5, uh, and it's, it's, say this, 
the, this this position is nice. The pawns are just running. The, this these these guys are not going anywhere. Uh, so the pawns are just uh, running here to King G3. The pawns start to move. Uh, so that that would be the way to do it in this position to get behind this pawn. Incredible uh, end game as well. This this, this rook and pawn ending uh, requires great precision. Um, but c5 was played, and rook g5 check now played, and rook e5 getting behind that pawn similar to what we just seen. Now this is this is technically hopeless for black, and black actually resigned here. Uh, let's have a look at this final position. If rook h1, rook takes e3 is possible. It's not losing a rook because check there's rook f3. So rook takes e3 is perfectly possible here, it seems. And this is just winning for, for white. Yes. Um, yeah, this 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 pawn was black's like last hope. H5 is, is just uh, safeguarding things and, and having a wing advantage. So yeah, maybe, you know, there was some potential for black having some drawing prospects, but I think the game will be remembered for White's remarkable king journey all up board, you know, eventually to h8. Then like the exchange sack, then a piece sack to be like the exchange down. Uh, then winning the exchange back. <laughs> then this, this rook and pawn ending. And I think both players having had that experience of the previous game, I think, I don't know, the emotional roller coaster of it, some inaccuracies maybe are understood at a human level you know all that excitement of the game prior unbelievable game and um yeah it seems as though it's it's it's, it's one of the more memorable uh, very interesting king walks that i've ever seen i think it uh, as far as uh, grandmaster games so the the king got uh, actually triumphed in the end so let's have a look at that final position coming back to f4 like this so the two pass pawns there okay comments or questions on youtube hope you got something out of that thanks very much